This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you again. Uh, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Jonah. It's considered one of the minor prophets. There's 12 minor prophets, and Jonah's one of them. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start there in a second. Uh, if you got a piece of paper like I do, put a marker right there at Jonah, and then turn over to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And uh, um, I, I'm, we're not going to stay over in Peter. I just want to read over there for a second because it relates to what Jonah's going through. And so for God bless you, good to see you again. I pray you're listening to Jail Ministry, uh, our podcast. We have several of them. Uh, get back with your bad self on Thursdays. Uh, many of us, or three or four of us, record preaching messages or teaching messages. And uh, we've got other things as well. We're getting ready to start a Saturday program at 3 o'clock. That's more music. Uh, than anything else. So now that you got your place over in Jonah, but you're in 2 Peter 3 9, I want to read this to you. Jonah is the wayward prophet. Chapter 1 is about Jonah running from God. God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire. They were, they were mortal enemies of the Jews of the ten northern tribes. They were mortal enemies. They hate them. And they were trying to wipe them out. And they were, the Jews are going through all this because God is chastising them because they're not worshiping him and following him like he said to. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh, serve God or fear God and keep his commandments. They weren't doing that. Amen. So we'll go back there and it's got application for us in the New Testament as well. Bad attitude guy running from God. Why are we in jail or prison today? Why are we in drugs or alcohol today? We're running from God. All of these messages apply to us. Some of this is just more obvious and upfront in your face. And uh, chapter one is Jonah running from God. Chapter two is Jonah praying. He gets in trouble, and all of a sudden he's brought to his knees. God brought him down solo. The fish and swallowed him, and uh, they threw him overboard. He went down into the water. There's five or six times in chapter one where Jonah is down, down, down. Once he started running from God. Chapter 3 is uh, Jonah preaching in Nineveh. He preaches in a town uh, that's probably got uh, nearly a million people in it. It takes him three days to walk across the town preaching as an uh, 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 evangelist, an uh, Old Testament evangelist. He has an eight-word message in eight days. Nineveh is going to be destroyed. No, in 30 or 40 days, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. Nineveh is going to be destroyed. He preaches that message Three days straight walking across. He's not staying in one place. He's walking across. The, the Ninevites believed God. I pray you've got the same testimony. You believe God. And guess what? The king got saved. They all got saved. They had a tremendous revival. 200 years later, uh, they were back to their old selves. Of course, people had died off and another generation was in. Uh, Jonah should have went back to Israel and got a bunch of prophets and came down there and taught them the word of God and maybe they wouldn't have fallen back and did what they did. But uh, and, and by the way, Jonah's mentioned in the book of Isaiah and one other Old Testament book. I can't remember what it is right now. Uh, I knew last week. I can't remember this week. But I'm getting old. Pray for my gray hairs and everything. Amen. Uh, chapter four. Jonah is angry. I did this entire book. There's 52 verses in Jonah. Uh, the minor prophet Jonah. There's 52 verses. We went through all 52 of them in anger management. And uh, the last two classes I taught uh, last week and uh, this week. Uh, Thursday of last week and Monday of this week. Two different groups. He's angry because he's mad that God saved these people after he preached to them. That, you know what? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They believed. The Bible records in the Old Testament the Ninevites believed. 
and they got saved. Amen. Have you believed and got saved? Have you believed and are following God faithfully now? Amen. Reading your Bible, praying, and going to church services and so forth. Amen. So if you would, uh, verse 9 of 2 Peter chapter 9, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some count slackness. Amen. In other words, some people think, you know, God ain't never going to actually judge. God ain't never going to do. No, no. God is not slack. He's, it's going to come true. The Jews were saying that before they got carried into captivity in, in the Assyrian Empire first. And then the, uh, North, the Southern Empire went into Babylon for 70 years. And that's where the book of Daniel comes out of there. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all of that is, is all that time period. Jeremiah preached for 40 years. They never repented. A few individuals repented, but they as a people never repented. They never got right with God. Amen. And eventually, God progressively made the, the chastisement worse, the disciplining or the spanking worse. The fifth step of his chastisement is deportation. Now today, I would tell people that are inmates in jail, the fifth step that you are under, the fifth step of judgment that you are under is now you've been deported out of the land. And, and now you're in jail. You're in Babylon or you're in the Assyrian Empire and just scattered all over the world. And so forth. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count, uh, some count slackness, but is long suffering or patient toward us. Here's what I wanted to get to. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We all got to repent every day and come back to full belief. In my personal Bible reading, I'm reading in the Minor Prophet Amos. It's a couple of books ahead of Jonah. And, and in that book, he, he tells them that, you know, you're, you're having all these religious things, but they're just rote. They're just outwardly religious. You're, you're doing the feast and all these things I'm doing, and you're doing the Sabbaths, but you can't wait till the Sabbath is over with so you can go back for selling stuff and using false weights uh, uh, saying it's a pound when really it's only 12 ounces. It's supposed to be 16 ounces and, and, and you're selling it as 12 ounces so you can rob people and rip them off and so forth. And it's fake religion. It's, it's phony. Uh, it's hypocritical. I'm acting like I'm all this, but I'm doing all that. Amen. And uh, God, is not God is not willing that any should perish. Perish there has the idea of dying and going to hell, the lake of fire, fire and brimstone, liquid fire for eternity, and absolute darkness. God doesn't want anybody to go. When Jesus died on the cross, John 19, 30, Jesus said, It is finished! It's over! It's done! I've paid the sin debt for all of mankind from noon to 3 p.m. The sun went out. Some say there was a lunar eclipse. Some say God put his hand over the sun so he could not see the, the sun in the sky, the sun and the stars in the heavens, the second heaven. All right. So he could not see the son of God with all of the sin of world laid on him for those three hours. At 3 p.m., Jesus said it is finished and he gave up the ghost and died and substitutionarily paid your sin debt. Paid it all and paid it in full. The debt's been paid. Your account is paid in full if you'll only access your account. You have to come to God. You have to admit you're a sinner and you have to admit you're sorry for your sin and ask God to save you. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. August 6, 1979, I heard a gospel message at Maranatha Baptist Church in Okinawa, Japan. And Pastor Ed Gibson was preaching. And, and uh, um, um, I said, man, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. Before I ever went to church, I never read a Bible. I don't know nothing about God. I knew that I was a sinner. I knew I was wicked. I did all kinds of things. Dope, drugs, women, just, just name it. I did it all. And I said, God, I wish you could save me. I'm so wicked, I don't think you can even save anybody like me. He said, son, 
because you asked, I'm going to do it. And I can save anybody. My blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is sufficient. John 1 29. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming down the side of the hill to the Jordan River where he was baptizing. And he said, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He is not a physical lamb. He's saying, this is the lamb that was foretold from Genesis 3.15. This man will take away your sins and he can save you from all of your wickedness. You can live for him. That's getting born again. You can live for him after that. Just keep reading his Bible and just keep praying and keep going to a Bible preaching church and you'll be all right. You notice I didn't say any denomination. I didn't say go to this denomination or that denomination. I said go to a Bible preaching church. Just because I got saved to Maranatha Baptist Church don't mean you got to go to Maranatha Baptist Church. Amen. You need to go to a church that shares the word correctly. That's what we do here at JL Ministry. We serve the word correctly. The Bible says God added to the church daily such as should be saved. Man does not add to the church. God does. My job as a minister is to correctly handle the word of God. Rightly dividing the word of God. Correctly handling it and bringing it forth to you. I started over there just to lay the groundwork for over here. It's not his will that any should perish. Any means anybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He doesn't want to perish there means dying and going to hell. Just like what we read over there in the other thing. Perish has the idea of dying and going to hell. So now we're over in Jonah. Please follow along with me. There's 14 verses in chapter 1. Five times the word down. Jonah went down, 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 down. When you quit following God, and if you were never following God, you were always going down. If I were to stop following God now, I'd be going down, not up. All right? It's not just metaphorical. It'll happen in your life. All of a sudden, you'll see everything going down. Amen. America is going down now. We've left God. We got transgenderism, homosexuality, and now we got Pride Month, Gay Pride Month. We got the president putting the gay flag on the White House, and the majority of Americans didn't vote for that and don't want it. All right. No man is supposed to be taking his erect penis, putting it in the rectum of another man, and calling it love. It's not love, it's perversion. Amen. And by the way, when I say that, it is not politics, it is Bible, it is Christianity. God does not want that. He rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah to make sure everybody in the world, whether they read the Bible or not, would know about God's thoughts about people doing homosexuality. If you want to know why people are homosexuality, homosexuals, read Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 32. He said, I gave them over to that because of willful unbelief. And uh, how much time we got, brother? Okay. <laughs> All right. Chapter 1 here of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it for me. Uh, their wickedness has come up before me. I read 1 and 2. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He hates these people so much he's going to run from God. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into, into it, the ship, to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Skip with me if you would and go over to verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and every man cried out to his God, little g God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. There's four of the five downs. They'll cast him into the water at his uh, urgings to save themselves. And all of a sudden, this great hurricane storm, uh, Eurocyclodon, this terrible storm of on the Mediterranean Sea, all of a sudden, it'll immediately stop once they throw the wayward prophet over into the sea. 
And uh, I think we ought to have a word of prayer before we go any further. Father, thank you for your mercy and grace. Pray for jail ministry. Pray for your forgiveness. Pray for your anointing. Pray for all the men and women that are listening to this uh, podcast today, dear Heavenly Father, and uh, recorded and pray for greater days ahead for jail ministry than behind. Pray that we keep putting out the Word of God. Pray that we keep correctly handling the Word of God. Keep our doctrine straight. And that we might lead those to you. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I am your spokesman. Put a guard on my lips. Let me just say that which you once said. In Christ's name, amen. Now, um, I skipped and went all over there. Let me uh, go back to two of you. would Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it. When he says cry out, yell and say, hey, you're going to die. All right? Uh, destruction is coming. In verse 3, go to Nineveh, that message. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Chapter 3, verse... Oh, I think it's verse 3 there. Yeah, it is. Verse 3. And uh, uh, 3 and 4. And, and the message that Jonah had to get. And yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He preached an eight-word message for three days walking across this town. All right? It wasn't Sunday in church. It wasn't Saturday, Sabbath uh, in some synagogue or something like that. No, no. He went right across. This ain't Jew land. This is Gentile land. And this Jewish preacher, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall, Nineveh shall be overthrown or destroyed. Chaos. Why? The evil and the wickedness of them has come up before God. He says, warn them. Every one of you in jail now today, before you got caught, before you got arrested, somebody warned you about what you were doing. They warned you about your wicked way. It may have been your mama. It may have been your daddy. May have been your brother, your sister, the police, your parole officer, your girlfriend, baby mama, grandmama, neighbor. Somebody warned you about what you were doing. I used to be a criminal when I was a young man, between 10 and 14, excuse me, 10 and 20 years old before I got saved. And uh, one time my mama found a bunch of money in my pocket in my blue jeans. And she says, boy, I don't know what you're doing, but whatever it is, you better stop doing it or the police is going to get you. I said, Mama, I've been selling drugs for a long time. The police ain't going to get me. Within four days, I was in jail. Three or four days. The point to that story is somebody warned me. God sent somebody or something to warn you. Amen. So chapter one is Jonah, 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 Jonah running from God. Amen. So uh, uh, he went down to Joppa and found a ship. That's still part of Israel. Tarshish is in Spain. Uh, uh, so it's about seven, 800 miles away. And, and uh, on a ship, that would take a long time. Now think about this. He's going to go west to Tarshish on a ship, or he could go 40 or 50 miles up the road uh, uh, from where he's at in northern Israel into a place called Nineveh, uh, one of the greatest cities that was founded by a man named Nimrod, uh, a, a Gentile way back in Genesis 9 and 10. And, uh, and, and Nimrod had started that city, and he also started Kalna and uh, um, oh, ba Babylon. He was also the founder of Babylon. He was a uh, devil worshiper. He was an idol worshiper. And, and I, I say devil worshiper because if you're worshiping idols, you're worshiping the devil. All right, God is not an idol. So uh, uh, he, he decided, I ain't going up there to help them. I'm going over here. Let's read the story. Verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. It's terrible. Then the mariners were afraid. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You ought to immediately, if you're afraid, you ought to immediately pray, God, do I got a reason to be afraid? What, what is it? What are you trying to tell me? What, what in my life do I need to change? That is God's way of alerting you. The doctor will tell you if, you, if, you, if this hurts or that hurts when you do this, he'll say, well, stop doing it. The pain is telling you you're damaging something. Stop it. 
so uh, the mariners got afraid, and every man cried out to his God. Notice it's a little G God. And threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest part of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. He's even sleeping through the storm that's going to sink the ship and kill everybody on it. The wages of sin is death. Watch what happens. Uh, uh, the pagans, all right, who do become believers at the end of chapter 1, all right, because of what Jonah tells them. All right, he didn't mean to sow in them. He didn't mean to tell them how to get saved, but he told them how to get saved. Thank you, brother. Verse 6, so the captain came to him and said to him, what do you mean, sleeper, arise? Call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. Hell, destruction. Verse 7, and they said to one another, come let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. Amen. God is in control of all that gambling. He'll never let gambling work out. This isn't straight up gambling. This is trying to find out who God's trying to reach. Man is supposed to work by the sweat of his brow. He'll make his way. Work, everybody wins. Gambling, somebody has to lose. That's another message for another time. Uh, some of y'all know something about casting lots. You say, what's wrong with gambling? I'm telling you. God said, by the sweat of your brow, Genesis chapter 3, you will make your living, not by gambling. Don't play the lottery and all that stuff. You're wasting your money. God isn't going to let it work out in the end. Verse 8. Then they said to him, please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble come upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah's a wayward prophet. He is a man of God. He is ordained by the Holy Spirit. He's ordained by man. Um, um, He's God's man. However, right now, he's backslidden. All right? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If I ain't living for God, don't you follow me. Um, but I want you to notice this. He fears or reveres God. Verse 10. His behavior is not matching up with what he's saying, though. Amen? His walk ain't matching in his talk. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you? Uh, what shall we do to you that the sea may become calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. Man, the storm is getting what It was a category three. Now it's a category four in four verses. Twelve. And he said to them, Pick me up. Amen. And throw me into the sea. So he's saying, down into the sea, amen. They're going to throw him down into the sea. And, and that's number five or six downs. Anytime the Bible is showing you, uh, repeating the same uh, idea, thought, or word, you ought to go, wait a minute, God's trying to say something. We have repetition going on. The word being repeated or the idea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that this great tempest is because of me. He knew it because he feared God and he knew how God worked. God said, wait a minute, you're my man. You're breathing my air. You're drinking my water. You're on my dirt. I anointed you. I called you to this position. You don't, you don't tell me who you're going to preach to. You preach to who I tell you to preach to. Amen. And um, verse 13 Nevertheless, so they, he, Jonah tells them, throw me in the water and the sea will become calm. They realize if we throw him in the ocean or in the Mediterranean Sea with a storm going on, he'll die. All right. But he knew what he needed to have done. Throw me out of here. God's trying to get you. That's why we do row or do all this stuff. By the way, some of y'all have tried all kinds of things in your life. And they don't work out. And you say, I wonder why this ain't working out. Why ain't God blessing me? Probably because you're not really following God or you're not sold, sold out to God. The, why, is Jonah, why is it not working him going to Tarshish? He's not doing the will of God. Have you ever prayed and actually asked God, should I go to this school? Should I go to this church? Should I go to this job? Should I go with this woman or this man? Uh, should, I, should I? And you fill in the blank. Or do you just go out there doing what you want to do? You're showing you don't fear God. 
And, and Jonah said he feared God, but he don't really respect God. Uh, not by his behavior, not right now. Uh, he corrects himself after this. And like I said, he's mentioned in two books of the Bible. So, uh, verse 12, And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to return to land, but they could not. Too late for that. For the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord. Now, you remember back in the other verse, I pointed out to you when they were talking about they prayed to their gods. It was little g God. Thank you, brother. Five minutes. Little g gods. But here they said they cried out to the Lord and said, we pray, O Lord, please the Lord. And said, we pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life. And do not charge us with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, or down into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. By the way, they're addressing God, and in a second, they're going to make offerings to God. They got saved from a wayward prophet. Jonah is such a great preacher, such a great prophet of God. Even when he's disobeying God, he's leading people to the Lord. Amen. I'm amazed. Everybody at some point in time in their life, save man, usually will go through something like Jonah's going through right here. We get to smelling ourselves or doing our own thing, and it don't work out. Amen? And uh, like Jonah does in chapter uh, 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 3, 2 he prays and 3 he obeys. And then sometimes still we get angry. I'm not going to get to it today, and I don't think I'm going to preach the rest of it another time. But if the Holy Spirit tells me to, I am. Because I do fear God, and I'm going to obey God. I'm not going to preach what Eric wants to preach. I'm going to preach what God wants preached. Amen? And um, so they picked him up and threw him in the sea. Verse 16, Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly. They reverenced God and offered sacrifices to the Lord and took vows. That's the Bible's way of telling you they got saved. Every man on that cruise ship got saved. Amen. Everybody on that uh, merchant, merchant mariner ship got saved. Amen. Jonah was already saved. And they got saved from the wayward prophet. Amen. Uh, verse uh, 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish. It does not say a whale. It just says a great fish. God had pre pre prepared some large fish. Amen. And Jonah was swallowed by that fish. And while he was in that fish, I don't have time to read it. Uh, but it's to say that, um, um, well, uh, look at verse 5. The water surrounded me, and this is chapter, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed forever. You have brought up my life from the pit. Those are things referring to dying. While he was in that fish, even though he's praying, he, he, he repented and prayed in that fish. And, and God saved him as the fish vomited him up. Uh, and, and at the end of chapter 2, verse chapter 3, vomited him up right by Nineveh. And then in chapter 3, verse 1, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. This is the same exact thing that he said to him. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to the Ninevites, uh, and preach, uh, to the, preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a great, exceeding great city, a three-day journey in extent. That's how long it would take to cross it. Amen. I've only got two minutes left. I want you to see something. Quit running from God. Right now you're in jail or prison. You've been swallowed by the fish. And you're dying. You're not dead, you're dying. The wage of sin is death. You need to stop. You need to do like Jonah. Start praying and start reading your Bible. Start going to the services and, and be faithful to God. Amen. Start memorizing that word if I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. All right, first thing you do when you get out of jail, get you a job and a church that teaches the Bible like we're doing now. Don't go to your denomination you went to before you were in church or wherever you went before because it clearly doesn't work because look where you're located at. I pray you listen to my 
uh, truthful, biblical uh, examples here about follow God, repent. It's not his will that any should perish, but repent. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the story of Jonah. I pray those listening in the sound of my voice would not just be hearers of the word, but they would do what we talked about. Not because I'm so great, but because you're so great and your word's so great. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Please save me, dear Heavenly Father. Please save them. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Thank you for your time.